thank you very much. Uh, Shegu, I know you have uh, you've been saying that uh, Nigerians should just move on, that there is nothing to expect uh, from this particular uh, you know, uh, court case that, that has that all oh, appeal that is going to the Supreme Court. And of course, uh, Barrister Mike also agrees with, uh, you know, that it is almost uh, not going to be any other way. It's going to be the PEPC. Now, we've seen the controversies that have been playing out in the judicial system, and we've uh, seen the call for a probe into, the, uh, into uh, uh, the claim that was made by Senator Bukachiwa, you know, roping his wife, uh, which was the former president of the Supreme Court. Of the, Could this be what is appeal. inspiring your of the Court of Appeal? I, I'm, I'm yes. sorry to say, but yes. Uh. Could this be what is inspiring your your you know what you think your thoughts on this particular issue? Well, there are so many there are so many inspirations one would draw from all of this. One of it is um, when the president, the chairman of um, the tribunal, came out and said some supporters of um, Peter Obi. Uh, are putting um, they're putting their lives in danger by talking about what is going on and threatening them and issuing threats that if they don't give a favorable judgment, X Y Z would happen and all of that. And you could tell from uh, when they were reading out the judgments that they were not happy, and of course because they're human beings, they were reading it with a lot of malice, and it, it was very obvious that whatever it is that was written. <clears throat> pardon me uh that was read was was um, written with um those allegations at the back of their minds i'm um, coming back to uh, uh the the um senator who roped his wife in we all know what is going on in nigeria the problem with us is we like to go around issues instead of going through them um these judges these justices are human beings and w in one way or the other they have one or two people that they respect I don't, um, I don't think I'm too clear on how justices are called to the bench and how um, they meet judges. But of course, if politicians are the ones who appoint these people and put them on the bench, you don't expect them to do anything otherwise than to do the bidding of the persons who have put them on that bench. I am not saying that they don't have a mind of their own, but of course, you would find in some situations that some of them will tell you, even when they know something is wrong, they would say they are abstain instead of saying what it is that is true. Like um, the barrister said, what um, is really fundamentally wrong with Nigeria is not just the processes. It is the constitution itself. I don't think it needs to be amended. I think the con con constitution as it is needs to be abolished. What we have now is a sham, it's a disgrace, it's an embarrassment uh, that we have to go to the court for interpretation all the time. We, we need to have a clean, clear constitution that says X, Y, Z is what it is. What you see is what you get. If I'm looking at Henry, this is Henry. I don't have to have any other description. What if tomorrow you lose your beard or you uh, decide to cut your afro off? So whatever it is that you're giving me is what it should be. The constitution should be very clear on issues. It should be very clear that the layman can pick it and read it and interpret what it means. We don't necessarily have to go to somebody who will be manipulated to give us a definition of what 25% in FCT means. It is an aberration. It's, an, it's a disgrace. And as it is, um, <clears throat> I hope the judges would learn from this and understand that um, people like me are beginning to lose. Uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm beginning to lose confidence in the judiciary because what what it means is if you have money in your pocket or you have the political uh, power, it's very easy for you to manipulate the bench to give you judgment that is favorable to you. So, like I said earlier on. We, we should start thinking of what we need to do for the general public and not just for ourselves. We need to start to build an institution, starting with the judiciary, that is free and independent of interference from the executive, the legislature, or anybody anywhere. They should have a clean, sound mind. We used to have very sound justices in Nigeria. Uputa, uh, late Uputa is there. Karibe White is there. Uwes is there, to mention just a few. Clean, clear-headed human beings who understood the law and would not shake or bend for anybody. In fact, if you try to bribe them, they're going to say it, sit it right there on the bench and say, X, Y, Z is trying to do X, Y, Z. I think you should stop that. And of course, you know what is going to come. You know what the penalty is when you try to bribe, bribe such people. 
Um, I I don't see a way forward until we drop this constitution and probably restructure or go back to the 2014 CONFAB um, uh, uh, report and adopt it as our constitution for now until we're able to remove these people who are in the National Assembly right now because the guys who are there now are not going to do anything that will favor Nigeria or Nigerians. Whatever they're going to put in the constitution will be what will be favorable to them now or their children in the future. Now, uh, you heard the verdict of the PEPC. What do these appeal to the Supreme Court mean for our democracy? You know, when you, I was at the uh, Apex Court, you know, for the tribunal verdict, you know, and during the press briefings after the verdict, you know, they talked about the fact that they had to fight for the democracy of uh, our Nigeria. So what does this mean for our democracy? Having the case, you know, move up to the Supreme Court where they, I mean, that's the final uh, say that they could have on these uh, appeals so far. Your take, and is it a waste of time? Yes, uh, very well. It, it would have been a very nice, <laughs> a very nice uh, uh, situation if the constitution is completely abolished. But in the in the situation that you abolish the constitution, what happens in the interim? So that is why it, you cannot just abolish it because we will not have a law that is governing the system at that time. That is why it, we need to uh, rejig it. We need to work on the constitution. There are still some provisions that are very uh, useful. We need to work on it and ensure that the constitution is the type that is a, a dynamic enough to govern us who are also dynamic in our system. And that is also the reason that we need to ensure that the judiciary purges itself of this non-confidence from the masses. Because once you don't have confidence in a particular system, it means that when somebody tells a does wrong and asks you to go to court, and uh, the person comes to court and does not get uh, uh, justice, the person would eventually take laws into his hands, and what we have in the system will be anarchy. So anarchy. we need the judiciary to ensure that we have justice that is confidence that is embedded back in the uh, judiciary. All right. Thanks for being with us tonight on the show. You have been listening to Shegun Nubio, who is a political analyst, and of course, Barrister Mike Umunan, who joins us uh, live from Lagos tonight. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us tonight.